you, all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. At the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, 
and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is in your bulletin, Psalm 104, to be said in unison. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is the Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open their hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth the Spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given the Spirit of utterance, of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated, activated by the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit because Jesus was not yet glorified. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. So what makes this special? What makes, what makes the 50 magic? Well, this isn't the first Pentecost that we're reading about in Acts of the Apostles today. We're reading, uh, when we read in the scripture about the Feast of Pentecost, the Jewish people had a feast 50 days after Passover. In 33 AD, Passover and Easter happens to be the same day. So that's how we end up here. The, uh, the fest, it marks the time, Passover, of course, when the children of Jacob, of Israel, come out of bondage in Egypt, and they go out into the desert, and the way the story goes is 50 days later, that is when Moses received the law on Mount Sinai, and of course Israel celebrated with a golden calf, and we know how that ended. But we celebrate that today, 50 days after we are free from the bondage of sin and death, we receive the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit comes with a lot of gifts, and that's one of the, and I'm going to get to why we, why we think of Pentecost as this miraculous showpiece of what the Christian faith is. All of the signs and wonders we associate with today are a result of that, what we say the Holy Spirit is. Coming and making us do things we don't normally do, like for the apostles, speaking in different languages. And what Paul says, you know, prophecy, uh, teaching, uh, speaking in tongues, interpreting tongues, healing, all of those gifts of the Spirit are traced to today. So why isn't every Sunday a fireworks show for us? Not that it shouldn't be. But I will uh, I, I remember, and many of you have heard this story, I've told it before, because it's one of my favorite stories about 
early on in my faith journey. I had a friend in high school whose father owned a Christian bookstore, not unlike, I think it was all logos, uh, kind of like the one that we have over here in Snyder Plaza. And it was a Christian bookstore, and he told me one time that he could never, he, he could sell all the books he wanted to about the gifts of the Spirit. He could not keep them on the shelves. Everybody wanted to know about a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, a gift of healing. But he couldn't give away books about the fruits of the Spirit. And I've thought about that since, because I remember there was this in the late 80s. This was kind of the last big crescendo of the charismatic renewal that really took place in the 60s and 70s. The exuberant worship, the where you had a lot of guitars in, in the service, you had, had a lot of contemporary music that came out of that. It was a flourishing of those gifts of the Spirit. And I've often thought since, what happened? Where did it all go? There are still some communities who try to keep that, that Spirit alive. But for the most part, we've settled back in. And I think it goes back to something that Jesus says about the Spirit in this Gospel. When He says that it will flow out of believers' hearts like a river. And I think about those gifts and what people wanted with those gifts. So many times when we think about the gifts of the Spirit, we think about what the gift will do for us. What will it be like for me to be able to speak in strange languages? What would it be like for me to be able to walk up to someone, lay my hands on them, and watch them stand up and walk? <coughs> when we think about the gifts of the Spirit that way, that's not a river, that's a lake. There's a dam that stops it from going forward. The gifts of the Spirit need to go like a river. What happens when a river stops flowing, it stops flowing in a lake or a sea, most notably, if the water stops flowing, you end up with, yes, the dead sea, right? You see the lowest place on earth, that is the area around Jericho, the area around where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls, the area where Sodom and Gomorrah were supposed to have been. You have a place on the earth where once the water gets there, once the river gets there, it can flow no further. And because of that, nothing lives there. It is the Dead Sea. When we pray for the gifts of the Spirit, when we think about how the Holy Spirit, how God wants to use us, our gifts are never for us. Our gifts are for the whole church. Our gifts are letting people know who Jesus is, what Jesus did, and that Jesus loves them. It's telling the world who Jesus is, what Jesus did, and that Jesus loves the world. And that Jesus loves the world through us. It's from our hearts that that has to go out like a river. A river that gives life and a river where none of it is jammed up and kept inside of us. Now I say, what happens to the charismatic renewal? Like I say, there are still pockets there. And the great thing about the Holy Spirit, the great thing about a river is, it doesn't stop getting refreshed. What makes a river flow? Snows melt. Rivers flood. 
as we think about our gifts, we think about this, what the Spirit of God is trying to do for us and through us. The river will not stop. The river will continue to flow. God cares about us and His church that much. And He wants the gifts that He's given through Jesus to the world in the Spirit. He wants them to flow through you. Out of the hearts of believers, the Spirit will flow like a river. We don't have to stand on the roof and speak in different languages. We don't have to have signs and wonders accompany us. We don't have to do anything to prove that we have the Spirit other than to let people know who Jesus is what Jesus did, and that Jesus loves you. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit and we shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, in your word you have taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all. Receive these our prayers which we offer to you. Inspire us with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who confess your holy name may know the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O oh Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, and George, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth your word and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. Give to all your people heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation, that with meek heart and due reverence we may hear and receive your holy word truly serving you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. So rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, Greg, our governor, and Eric, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold your gracious hand in all your works, that rejoicing in your whole creation, they may honor you and be faithful stewards of your goodness. O Lord, comfort Rusty and Kim, Malcolm and Phyllis, Kiki, 
Angel, and Ken, as well as Terry, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. In the diocesan circle of prayer, we especially pray for, in Richardson, Epiphany, the very Reverend Neil Michelle, the Reverend Christopher Stephen, the Reverend Ignacio Gama, in Prosper St. Paul's, the Reverend Tom Smith, the Reverend Kate Smith, in Sulphur Springs, St. Phillips, the Reverend Cynthia Moore. We also bless your holy name for all your servants departed in this life, especially Dorothy Jones. Grant them continual growth in your love and service and grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all your saints that with them we may share in your heavenly kingdom. Grant these prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Sunday. It is also a Memorial Day weekend. Tomorrow we pray and remember especially those who have fallen in the service to our country. We also remember, and I want to make a point of this, we remember all of those who may have come back from war in their body but left the best part of themselves on a battlefield somewhere. Uh, there are a lot of those, and especially as we think of how we care for our veterans, we honor on Veterans Day as a different thing, but I'd also like to remember that this Memorial Day, there are, there are those who gave themselves a service to our country who still walk with us, but have left a piece of themselves somewhere. So we thank them and we honor them there. Let us pray. O oh, Judge of the nations, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our country who in the day of decision ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until all the peoples of this land share the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I hope everyone does have a wonderful weekend this weekend. It is, it is relaxing, but also that we bear in mind the solemn nature of, of this, why we, uh, why we have the day to reflect. Uh, today, also being Pentecost, it is a great day for us to get together and to have some fellowship. Right after this is our parish picnic, and so all of you are invited. Randy is over there cooking now, and we look forward to being over there. That will be immediately after the service, so uh, when we get done, we'll walk right over there. We'll have a great time with that. Uh, starting in June, this, I want to make sure everybody is aware of this. So instead of our weekly Bible study, we are going to uh, join with the Abbey. The Abbey is uh, putting on a program uh, about, using, about finding your spirituality through the ministry of, you may remember Fred Rogers. Some of you know him as Mr. Rogers. Uh, what you may not know about Mr. Rogers is he was an ordained Presbyterian minister. And the lessons he gave for both children and adults flow from his own spirituality. And so I'd really encourage you to take a look at that. Make sure that I uh, that, that you sign up for that. You can do that through the Abbey's website or there is a link in the Friday emails. Speaking of Friday emails, uh, if I don't have if I don't have your uh, address and email and phone number, make sure you've got one of these. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you're not getting those, make sure you fill one of these out and place it in the collection plate as the ushers come by. 
Um, we'll make sure that you're kept up to date with all of the things going on. All baptized Christians are invited and encouraged to participate in Holy Communion. Uh, this is an Episcopal table. This is a, the Lord's table and not, not an Episcopal one. Uh, so we, we just ask that we ask, invite all of you to come forward and be a part of that with us sharing the Lord's Supper. Uh, if for any reason you'd like not to uh, come forward, simply play, uh, not to receive communion, we still invite you to come forward. Play, just place your arms over your chest like so, and we will. That'll be our signal to give you a blessing. The way we do the wine is a little different here. If you didn't get one of the little cups on your way in, let one of the ushers know as they come by at the offertory, and we'll make sure you are uh, taken care of with that. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due His name. Bring offerings and come into His courts. <laughs> Thank you. 
continues on page 372 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your service bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time. Fountain of life and source of all goodness. You made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of, your redemption, of our redemption 
recalling Christ's death and his ascent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we praise to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life, the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share in this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. Remember George, our bishop, and Michael, our presiding bishop, and all who minister in your church. Grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the feast. Alleluia.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacraments of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and dignity of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Spirit of truth lead you into all truth, giving you the grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the wonderful works of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 516. Number 516.
closing hymn is number 516. Number 516.